You're listening to Get Informed America, the only true unfiltered show that's fighting fake news and finding common ground. Now, here's your hosts, Dave Oakenquist and Rodney Johnson. Hello and welcome to Get Informed America, the show that breaks through the mainstream media box to bring you real smart news. Hi, I'm Dave Oakenquist and joining me is Rodney Johnson, the editor of Informed American Breaker of chains, protector of the realm, and the smartest man I know. Rodney, how are you today? I'm doing well. I think we're in a video game now. <laughs> we are. Well, I'm glad that I have you on my side as we go through this adventure, which is, you know, the world changes so fast, Rodney. We, we, we spoke just a week ago. Uh, this wasn't even on our radar, and uh, before we know, it was flying under the radar, and then basically the world explodes um, and mass protests around the country. I know you've been you've been tracking this story uh, uh, from the beginning, and and uh, obviously still reporting on it, Rodney. But uh, it's been a real crazy time in the world. Of course, you know we've got coronavirus out there somewhere still. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we can get to maybe we can yeah. we can touch on uh, some of the developments of that. But of course, uh, referring to uh, what the situation in Minneapolis, the killing of George Floyd. Uh, now all four police officers have been charged in that, and uh, you know protests erupting around the country country and uh, going and going and going and they, they it's still they don't seem to have been abated so what is your take on uh, you know the situation with uh, the happened with George Floyd with the police officers and then the subsequent peaceful protests that began that turned into something much different well I, I think it's the take that a lot of people have which is you watch eight minutes and 42 seconds of this officer kneeling on a person's neck this is a black man's neck clearly uh, but anybody's neck is horrible yeah. and there has research out there. Ronald uh, Fryer at Harvard University uh, did a good piece of research a couple of years ago and found that um, black men are much more likely to suffer being roughed up at the hands of police than whites. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's the data, right? It's the data. And so this was an example of it that of course went to the extreme with the man killed, which yeah. is horrible. Um, and, and who can't, who looks at this and thinks this is good? It makes no sense, of course. And there was a poll out there from YouGov that said 78% of Americans are like, yeah, charge these police officers. This is crazy. And so that's kind of the crux of it for me, right? Everybody gets to choose what it looks like to them, uh, is we have this intersection of people dealing with police, and in this instance, clearly the black community dealing with police, and saying this isn't how it's supposed to go. And then you have a protest, and you want to ask, okay, you're protesting, so let's let's get to the point of it. Let's let's find the point of action that is the change that makes this better. And so, uh, my heart, your heart, goes out to protesters who are out there saying, "Look, this is a horrible event," and comes on the heels of uh, Brianna. I can't remember her last name. Killed in Kentucky in a no-knock warrant that shot her as she lay in bed. And a separate incident because it was private citizens, although a retired police officer. Um, killing the young man who was uh, jogging, uh, I believe, in Georgia. Uh, so anyway, this kind of foments into this, but then it turns into these riots, which is where, I'm um, assuming me, like many other people, look at it and go, wait a second, two different things. Send in the police, send in the National Guard, stop the looters and rioters, because now you're destroying the exact communities that you want to save and help. And uh, so it, it, th those aren't the same. I don't view them the same. I assume a lot of people don't view them the same. I get the protests, you know, go do that, you know, and call for the change that's going to make us better as a nation. But this looting and rioting is, is not moving anything forward. It moves us backward because it takes our eye off the ball and changes it to something else. Yeah, that's right, Rodney. And uh, in fact, you wrote about that, uh, that poll there uh, on Informed American. Uh, people can search that story it's called Media Portrays Polarized America, but vast majority say officer who knelt on Floyd should be charged. And you cite that 78%. And yeah, I mean, I think maybe if there's a, you know, there, there's, there's, of course, there's some bad stuff that happened there. But if there is some good thing, uh, and as you mentioned, if anybody watches that video, I, I think most sensible people would say, no, this is too far. This is unnecessary. The man is already in cuffs. There's really no point here <laughs> to this, to continuing to, 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 you know, restrain him in that way. I don't, I don't, I, I don't get it. And I, again, I, you know, I, I don't, we, we've seen this a lot. Uh, so I think uh, change needs to be made, but, so we have the protesters, Rodney, and, and we, of course we—that's that, you know—it's an American right. Um, 
well, at least, well, depending on <laughs> depending on what's going on, or if your governor tells you you can, you can or can't. Uh, right. But but in this case, uh, yeah, we support that. I think. Well, actually, no. Let me just say that we think we support that regardless of the circumstance. I think that's my stance. Would you agree with that? Regardless of what's going on, I think no matter what is going on, um, you have a right to 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 stand up and, and make your voice heard to your government, right? You should be able to protest the exact people who are your government authorities telling what you can't do. So of course right. you need to do this. So. Right. The, the situation around COVID-19 was it was a circular argument. Because <laughs> right, but, it, but it comes all the way back into this because, of course, you have the, gov the uh, mayor of New York saying, hey, you know, social distancing and you've got to stay away and wear masks and all this stuff. And you can't go out and go to church. You can't go to parks and playgrounds. You can't do all sorts of things, but you can protest. It's like, wait a second. You have to choose because that becomes clearly selective enforcement. And we are a republic. We are a, a nation of laws. And so selective enforcement is the antithesis of what we're supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. And this is also uh, another one you put up on informedamerica.com called NYC finally enforces bans on, banned on gathering by kicking moms and kids out of park. And there's plenty of video of this. People strolling through just on the, you know, on the sidewalks and the parks getting cleared out by the police. This is during the day. There's no protesting going on. Yep. And then, of course... Well, I, you know, we can let, you know, th t 10,000 people on the streets at night doing God knows what uh, with no enforcement. It, it's absolutely nuts. It's sort of like, what, it's, it's, it's tyranny on the regular guy and then, you know, anarchy for everybody else or something. It's, it's very bizarre and it does seem to, it, it seems to go against everything <laughs> what the United States is about, right? I mean, yeah. I can't even walk down the street. Meanwhile, you're just going to allow mass looting uh, just, you know, under the cover of darkness right. or something. I don't understand right. it. And the selective enforcement is the thing, right? Where you look yeah. at it and say, wait a second, if it's a health risk, it's a health risk. I, I hear you. I, if, whether I agree with you or not, I hear you. But then when you tell me it's a health risk, but this is okay and that isn't, it's like, hmm, that, that, that's where the problem is. All right. So let me go. Let me ask, uh, let's, since we've been dancing around it, let's talk about coronavirus now. I mean, what, <laughs> is it over, Rodney? <laughs> I mean, it's not over, uh, <laughs> but we're getting to the point that you and I have beat on now for uh, several months, which is, you know, we're opening back up and I, of course, live in Texas and open up. I mean, once the mask comes off, it comes off. This, uh, other than businesses which risk their license by having more than 50% or this or that, yeah. people are in throngs on the beach and everywhere else. And so we may see some numbers come back up and we have in a couple of places, but people are out and about. They are just out and about. It's interesting um, because you're seeing some people voluntarily say, I'm not going to do that. And a really good example for me are churches um, because you have typically older populations in churches. And so they're saying, hey, wait a second, we can't risk this. And yeah. in my world, that's still smart. You're looking at people individually saying, there's a higher risk for me because I am in this group that has previous health issues or advanced age or whatever. And so I'm not going to do this. That's exactly what it should be. And so I think, again, we're going to get to the end of the summer and go, wait a second, we opened up and we didn't all die. Being closed for a long time <laughs> sure looks less like it made sense. Back to the surgical approach, the whole thing. So. Well, speaking of, we rem uh, you remember this story, I believe, uh, Rodney. I think we I think we brought this up on the show. There was a, there was a story from the Atlantic. Just to remind everybody where we were here, the story in the Atlantic headline: Georgia's experiment in human sacrifice. The state is about to find out how many people need to lose their lives to shore up the economy. This is in April, guys. And yep. <laughs> And there's a lot of those, you know, there's, there's, there are an awful lot of stories of people who are calling for a tremendous number of deaths. And again, you know, I'm the eternal optimist. And so I think most people do go into what they're doing with, you know, a good heart and, and a good point of view. And so I think people were genuinely concerned about health. Um, I also think that a lot of them were relying on mistaken numbers and math. And yeah. so um, I, I think that's being borne out by our experience here on the backside. Well, it certainly became political uh, regardless yeah. because it became a, a red state versus blue state thing. Uh, now, beyond that, though, I think one of the more heart, maybe the most heartbreaking uh, stories that I've heard that I've come across are, are cases of people who have, ha who have family members who die, who can't go see their relatives or, or, or their, their, you know, their, their travel was restricted to the point where they, they couldn't get there or, or they couldn't hold a service. Or there's another story I, I, heard, I read about a man who 
who was had some health problems, so was in a, he was already in the hospital and contracted COVID, and uh, was and he he died in the hospital within, within about six weeks. His wife couldn't go in to see him; nobody could go see him, and he died alone in a hospital room with no one there to comfort him. It's absolutely tragic that what what we what we went through uh, to sort of get there, and then now it just I don't know it just feels wrong here that it's like well. Well, forget all that. You know, if we're mad enough about something, is if there's something that's 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 deemed important enough, uh, it's okay. We we can just we can sort of push through, and that that's fine. Forget all the other stuff we said. And uh, you know, the virus doesn't care, Rodney. So I think that's a, that's what makes people angry, and then a little bit suspicious of what they've been told from our leaders and our our uh, our elites. Well, there's it, so so to parse that. Yeah, there was a lot there. Sorry. Well, but but you start with. Somebody's in the hospital, and, and those stories are out there. I've, I've read many stories about the caregivers being the doctors and nurses who are the last people to be with those who pass yeah. because their loved ones can't be there. And, so, and it's heartbreaking, to your point. They are in a hospital. They were at the height of a pandemic being transferred among people, and they were in health facilities that had COVID-19 cases, typically, right. in most cases. Uh, where I was reading these stories. Could have happened in others, but this was in hospitals that had COVID-19 cases. Right. And so it wasn't like a group of protesters where no one, or you presume that no one knows they're ill with it, and they just kind of get out together on the street and kind of march and yell and whatever they're doing. This is where there is the, the exact risk of death going on um, because you're, you're bringing people who are not ill to a place where the illness exists. So there's a difference there, but that being said, yeah. the most important thing to me would be the death of that close loved one. If my spouse was passing and I couldn't go see her because of this, and then I turned around and saw someone protesting a social injustice that they believe strongly in and were allowed to join together, I would be out of my mind angry at whoever was making those decisions, and I would not rest until something. I don't know what something is, yeah. but at the end of the day, if my wife had passed weeks ago and I was not allowed to see her and then I saw this selective enforcement, believe me, I would be beside myself. And, yeah, and, and, and in I this agree. particular case, I, 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 I apologize. I read, there was a thread on Twitter. It was one of the, I believe he's one of the executives at the blaze. So this maybe could be found if anybody wants to track it down. But in this case, Rodney, the wife of the dying man and relatives were willing to sign waivers that they would, they would stay in the hospital themselves for, for the, for a whole yep, quarantine, quarantine the everything. whole bit. Yep. I mean, anything I can do to, to satisfy your regulation and the answer every single time was no. no. And I, I just, I, <laughs> I really wonder um, the, the fallout there's to me, there's going to be a big fallout in credibility uh, for, I don't think people, I think people are going to look really skeptical when they hear advice from experts, advice from people who are, who are charged with making the decisions that affect all of our lives. I, I think, uh, that may be, have been damaged, uh, f for many years to come. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm, well, it, it all goes back to the same thing, right? You're seeing the reopening without the huge run up in cases yet. It may still happen, of course. Um, and then you see the selective enforcement. And it has to throw the authority of the previous decisions out the window. It must. Now, Rodney, as someone uh, who, who wants to preserve the social order, <laughs> um, who doesn't like to see, uh, you know, uh, mass crime in the streets, and, uh, well, I don't know that anybody does, but, <laughs> but uh, th th there has been, there's been a debate going on about that, Rodney. There was, a, there was a poll out there from Morning Consult that said 58% uh, of Americans, not, not Republicans, not just 58% of all Americans wanted the military to be used to basically clear out the streets uh, right. of, from what's been going on. Of course, that gets into, of course, you have to use the National Guard and all that sort of thing. But I got, putting all that aside, um, wh what do you feel about, uh, where do you come down on this about being able to, should we let this thing peter out? It, it, there is maybe some indication that it might be. Um, or how do you protect the communities who are, especially, you know, small business owners? Those that seem to be the ones that are hurt most uh, of all the stuff that's been going on in, this, in these cities. You have to understand the progression. When you have a problem locally, you call the police, right? And if the police can't handle it because it becomes too big of an issue, then yeah. it goes up to the governor to call in the National Guard. That's the next step. The National Guard is named the National Guard. <laughs> That's what they're supposed to do. 
yeah. And then if they can't handle it because it gets so large as to create a threat to the nation, it's called the Insurrection Act, right? Then that's when the U.S. military uh, can be sent in. Mm -hmm. And what, what has happened in the history of the nation is presidents have called in the military before. I mean, you know, George H.W. Bush called in for, you know, Compton Watts, that, that deal, I believe. Right. But it tends to be when the governor doesn't act. And that's kind of where we are. I think what we want is for our elected officials to take the actions necessary to stop the clear law breaking of looting and arson and all the other things going on, destruction of private property. This is people's livelihood, for goodness, goodness sake. Yeah. And when the mayor of New York says, uh, I'm not calling in, I'm not asking for National Guard, I don't want any of that, and Governor Cuomo doesn't send them, then people look and say, well, if they're not going to follow the, the path that's supposed to stop all this, then we need somebody above them to do it. And that, of course, falls to the federal government and the military. Yeah. I'm personally not a fan of the military going in uh, because I want to see the progression work the way it's supposed to first. And as I've written on Informed American, the police are also called peace officers. The National Guard is trained in disaster response and support and recovery as well as, of course, keeping the peace. Soldiers are trained for war. That's a different thing. And so when you take soldiers that you train for war and you put them in a civilian situation, bad things can happen that nobody wants. And so while I definitely want us to keep the peace and to you know, get rid of the lawbreakers and the ones who are destroying these you know, businesses and neighborhoods, I would love to see it go through the progression of the National Guard before we ever get to the military. Yeah, as would I, and I hope. Um, well, I hope they can <laughs> get a handle on 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 some of the worst places. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, we never. Well, you certainly never want to see the idea of you know troops firing on their own citizens or anything like that. Right, Rodney. What do you make of this argument uh, that I heard a lot, uh, especially on Twitter, regarding a lot of these businesses and buildings, saying, "Yeah, well, they they've got insurance, so you know, what are you so worried about? Is that you think that's a valid argument?" <laughs> No, it has zero value. Um, the first is it gives anyone license to break, steal, or otherwise destroy if they feel that their personal cause is good enough. Uh, and second, just to say, let's start with the presumption you have insurance. So what makes the insurance company less of a business than any other? Why are they paying for you to break the law? It is clear that you are breaking a law. Uh, and then take that assumption away, a lot of businesses don't have insurance. Insurance is actually very expensive. And yeah. so and it's about to get a lot more expensive. And uh, yes, and be, so there will not be insurance anymore if this can, if, if you know, people can just take right. what they want every, every time they, you know, every time they feel like they, they have the right to, right? That the concept will be dead. <laughs> right. And so the further away you get from somebody having to come out of their pocket, the, the, the closer. The, the more likely it appears they're willing to have it happen. Uh, the whole idea of, well, just don't pay your rent for three months. Well, what about the landlord, right? Doesn't the landlord have the right to receive the income for its business, for his yeah. business? And so, yeah, I, I, I give that zero weight. <laughs> I'm with you. I just, I agree 100%. I, I wanted to hear what, what, uh, what your thoughts were on that. Uh, the other topic, Rodney, something that's been that's been bouncing around in my mind uh, and something I'm going to talk to our Facebook group today about is, uh, do the wounds in this country run too deep? Do we, are we showing that, are, are things reconcilable um, in America or, or are we headed for some sort of a, some sort of a, you know, I hate to use the, the term civil war or a breakup or something like that. Can, can America hold itself together or should America hold itself together? It seems like we're increasingly, uh, many, not just two sides, many different sides have uh, an inability to talk to one another, to reconcile with one another, and to tolerate the existence of one another. Uh, so what, what, do you, what do you think of that? Have you been thinking about that yourself? Or do you think we're maybe, I know you are the optimist, so maybe you're just going to tell me we're all going to be fine. Well, we're not all fine. Um, I've yet to read about an historical civilization or experience one in modern day that's all fine. Yeah. Um, and so the closest you get are societies that are so homogenous uh, because they tend to be small um, that there is no diversity of thought. Uh, so, you know, if you want to live there, you can do that. Yeah. Um, I, I, think we I think we can be better. Let's go there. I think we can be better. And there are a lot of ways to do that. 
Uh, and I do not think that this is a point of breaking up the nation or any of those things. Um, I, I, I go back to the YouGov poll that says a lot of people agree. It's like, yeah, go ahead, you know, and, and you're seeing police chiefs around the nation say this is horrible. What in the world? I have yet to see a police chief or anybody in authority go, yeah, kneeling on some guy's neck for nine minutes is A-OK. Don't know what happened here. Nobody's saying that. And so um, I, I definitely think that this is part of the progress and, and making things better. Um, so I, I, I think there are, there are long-term systemic issues that, that we should be looking at to break this up before it ever gets to this point. One of them being the ability to call the police on the police. You know, who's, whose authority is that? When you look at Minneapolis, and I can't remember the numbers exactly, but in terms of the complaints against the police department, I think it was only 2% were considered warranted or actually anything happened. And the most common outcome was a one-day suspension. And so you look at it, it's like, can it really be that 98% of the people who complained were wrong? That, <laughs> that seems <laughs> unlikely. Uh, and so... We, we have a situation where, and I have not researched this far, uh, but just in casual reading, police unions have a lot of strength in keeping officers on the job, even when there are many complaints or issues. Mm. And I'll go out to the Marjorie Douglas shooting, uh, high school shooting in um, Florida, where the officer who was on the scene, who did not go in for more than 10 minutes, drove his car to the other side of the parking lot for a while, uh, he was fired, and he was recently reinstated to his position with oh, $138,000 really? of back pay. Oh. So This is the guy that was uh, establishing a perimeter, right, while, 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 ki yeah. while children are being and I, murdered. And I don't know what I would have done in that situation. Hey. Clearly, I believe he was supposed to be trained to be in that situation. Well, you're not a cop. Uh, if you're a cop, well, sorry, I, but... To me, if you're a cop, that's what that's what your job is. Exactly. But, but you still don't know what you're going to do when somebody's firing an automatic weapon and you're supposed to run at it. Understood. But, but the whole idea that you would pursue your job after that, I just <laughs> this might be a I find that unconscionable. <laughs> um, I find that unconscionable. So my point is that <laughs> yeah. there's clearly not a situation of holding people accountable for these things. And I think that's the first step. And there are many things that we could do, not the least of which, it's charter schools, right? You get charter schools in poor neighborhoods, which tend to be minority neighborhoods, give people a choice to go to a better school. And that's being held hostage to teachers unions. And so there, there are things that we can change, I think, that can address this. And hopefully some of that comes out of it. So Rodney, you still believe in America. Uh, we just need, uh, we, we, yep. but we're just, we need to work towards uh, something better. And uh, we can, we're, it seems to be, you seem to be believing that we are incrementally getting closer to that, right? I sure think we can. And I think it's conversations, right? We, we have conversations and we start tearing at this and tearing at this and, and video works. I like that people have a cell phone. Take a video for goodness sake. Yeah. Let's all see it and see what happened. Uh, there was a gentleman, uh, I believe it was in St. Louis, who owns the barbecue store or barbecue restaurant, and people were out at midnight long after the nine o'clock curfew. The police showed up trying to break it up. They ran into the restaurant and he was shot by the police. But the video shows that he shot first. I, I mean, I, my heart goes out to the man. He owns a restaurant. I mean, by all accounts, he's a good guy. But you shot at police. I, what did you think was going to happen? They shoot back when that happens. Right. And so um, that is tragic, uh, certainly. But it shows the fuller incident. And so that's, that's what I want. And in this case with uh, uh, George Floyd, I mean, a police officer who says, oh, restraining him and he passed. Well, if this had happened with no camera, if nobody was around, that would have been the story. That would While have been in it. custody, yep. he passed. And now we have video that goes, no, that's not what happened. And so, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, as they say, sunlight's the best disinfectant. Yeah, 100%. I mean, they just say, could say he was resisting, blah, blah, blah. All four yep. officers testify to that fact, and there's nothing contrary, so they all get off. And now, now in contrast, uh, the, the, the one cop with, the, this, with his knee on the neck is charged with the now second-degree murder, and the other three are getting uh, other charges related to that. So that, that is something. That certainly is uh, an improvement. Um, and, uh, yeah, I agree 100% with the video. Take as much video as, as, as possible uh, to bring this stuff to light. Ronnie, 
uh, switching gears slightly, but there was some really important news that came out this morning, which was we had the jobs report and we had a disastrous, disastrous April. We uh, losing over 20 million jobs in the, in the report. That was, and then Wall Street was expecting somewhere between eight and nine million down again for May. But instead, we had a pop. Two and a half million people got their jobs back, Rodney. That's really encouraging to me, and I know we're we're still we're still digging ourselves out of this economic hole. But uh, this is this is a this is some cause for optimism, isn't it? It, it is. Uh, the numbers came out, and as you said, you know everybody's expecting more negative, expecting the unemployment rate to go from fourteen point seven to about about twenty point five, uh, and it went down to thirteen point three. And so Wall Street was cheering. The market was up. The Dow was up more than 600 points uh, as it opened. Um, We have to remember at 13.3, we're still 30% higher than the worst rate during the great financial crisis. Certainly. Um, And the question becomes, how quickly do the rest of the jobs come back and how many of them come back? We don't know that answer yet. And so we'll see. There's, there are, there's an ancillary story in there as well. Um, of people who are saying, well, I don't want to go back because I'm worried about my job or my health. Yeah. And the employer is saying, hey, I need you back. And they're saying, oh, I don't want to. And so we're getting into that space of, well, a lot of people are making more by not working. So, you know, they're collecting more in unemployment, um, but they're reporting their workers to the unemployment office for their state, which they're required to do. Yeah. And so this... I, I think the stories are going to get uh, a lot more personal here over the next month while unemployment or two months while unemployment payments remain high. And yet businesses are saying, please come back because I need workers. Well, just to go back to that, I mean, you are no longer unemployed <laughs> if, you're, if your uh-huh. employer <laughs> says come back and, you've, and you refuse. You are <laughs> you're still unemployed, but it's now by choice. Well, so, you've, yeah, well, you've now quit. In, in my, you've, you've not been furloughed right. or laid off. Um, but yes, but, you don't have a, but yeah. workers are saying, you know, you can't make me safe. You haven't created a safe working environment. Therefore, I can't in good <laughs> conscience go work there. Right. And that's where the fight starts. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, it's, uh, but, you know, aside from that, uh, you know, Rodney, you're the optimist. What do you <laughs> You're bringing in the downside. People are going back to work, you know, and I, I don't know what's going on in your, in the Houston area for you, but in the Tampa area, I mean, we are in, uh, in we are basically open. Uh, and then uh, Florida has further, the governor's Florida has further eased restrictions. I believe now uh, gyms and bars can be open. My wife and I over, over last weekend went out to eat inside Rodney when they had a 50% capacity. Uh, it was a surreal experience, but uh, also very enjoyable. So uh, we are on the move here in Florida. The traffic is unfortunately back. Uh, what's going on in the Houston area for you? Same story. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm actually south of it, so I'm not in Harris County exactly. And so we've been open for weeks. And yeah. as I said before, you know, when, you, when it opens up, the masks come off. And so, uh, you know, it, it, people are not very good at judging distance, as you can tell by car accidents. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it goes all the way down to how far away they stay from you or don't in the grocery store at Home Depot. Yeah. Um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, so it, we've, we've had the reopening. The beaches in Galveston are packed. Uh, yep. Bars cannot be open like they were. When they do open, I believe it's this week, it's going to be sit down only in a bar, uh, which doesn't do a lot for beach bars. <laughs> uh, and so th- the fact that people are out is great. It doesn't mean that businesses are completely back. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's the thing, right? It's still the money changing hands that makes the economy go. And so we're going to have to see what that looks like. Um, I have not looked at the latest estimate for second quarter GDP. I assume it's still around negative 40%. Yeah, too scary um, to look. Yeah, and the estimate for the full year is down six or seven. Uh, that's a, <laughs> that's a, a breathtaking change, uh, breathtaking. We have not seen that since the Depression. Uh, and so that's the sort of thing that we have to keep an eye on long term. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we will be reporting and discussing all of those developments. I want to thank you, Rodney, for joining me. I want to thank all of you for watching today. I want you all to become informed Americans by subscribing to this channel and uh, hitting the like button if you've enjoyed this content. Also, comment below on all the topics that we have discussed. I want you also to go to informedamerican.com where you can get real smart news in your email inbox every single day by signing up. Rodney, looking over uh, the coming days and over the weekend and beginning of the next week, what do you have your eye on? What are some of the topics people can expect to get in their inbox when they uh, they sign up at real at uh, informedamerican.com? 
Well, I, you know, it's going to be the protest and the reopening. I know we've said it before. It's a bit of a broken record on the reopening, but <laughs> now we've had a couple of weeks of it. So are we starting to see cases come back? Yeah. Uh, the White House identified five different drugs that it said were front runners for a vaccine. That's going to be uh, good news if we see more of that. And Europe is a thing. Um, the Europeans are closer to joining on a fiscal basis, which means basically the Northern European countries supporting the Southern European countries outright giving them cash. That's never happened before. So it'll be interesting to see if that actually takes off. Absolutely. For Rodney Johnson, I'm Dave Oakenquist telling you to get informed, America. You've been listening to Get Informed, America, brought to you by the Informed American Radio Network. Please like and subscribe today in order to get new exclusive weekly episodes. Any questions, thoughts, or comments can be sent directly to info at informedamerican.com. And don't forget to visit informedamerican.com to keep up with real, smart news. Until next time, fight fake news and find common ground.